more than 60 years of using paracetamol as an analgesic and still we don't know exactly how does it work frustrating isn't it you're right Jackie but indeed we have some suggested mechanisms The mechanism of action of paracetamol is mediated through which of the following systems? Is it A. Serotonergic system B. Eicosanoid system C. Cannabinoid system or D. Opioid system Remember, you still have four lifelines! And the correct answer is... Indeed, all of them are correct. It is widely accepted that the analgesic effect of paracetamol is mediated through the CNS. But the central effect that is largely responsible for mediating paracetamol analgesic effect is still unclear. Actually, the most widely accepted theory is that the activation of the serotonin pathway in the CNS largely mediates the analgesic effect of paracetamol. However, other pathways such as eicosanoid, cannabinoid, opioid, and nitric oxide could participate in mediating the pharmacological effects of paracetamol. Surely, we will start with the most widely accepted mechanism, which is the serotonin pathway. Now we illustrate the serotonin inhibitory pathways with and without paracetamol. In general, the painful stimuli in peripheral tissues are transported by nociceptor nerves toward the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And from there, they ascend toward pain processing centers in the brain. Naturally, we have opposite descending inhibitory pathways which interfere with the ascending pain signaling at the level of the dorsal horn. Therefore, decreasing the pain sensation fired by peripheral tissue injury. Among various transmitters, serotonins play important roles in these descending inhibitory pathways. It has been found that paracetamol enhances the inhibitory effects of serotonin descending pathways to suppress the pain sensation elicited by the tissue damage. Actually, Different research groups have supported the hypothesis that paracetamol enhances the inhibitory effects of the serotonergic pathways. Now let's go back to the other suggested mechanisms of paracetamol action. And this time, we will go through the eicosanoid system. Eicosanoid's production pathways start from the cell membrane phospholipid which is degraded by phospholipase A2 enzymes to produce arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is metabolized by famous family of isoenzymes known as cyclooxygenase, which is abbreviated as COX. There are two well-known isoenzymes of this family, COX1 and COX2. The prostaglandin G2 produced by COX enzymes is an intermediate transient compound which is rapidly reduced by peroxidase enzyme to produce prostaglandin H2. The prostaglandin H2 is the direct precursor of prostacyclin, thromboxane, and all other prostaglandins such as prostaglandin D2, E2, 
and F2 alpha. These prostaglandins are actively involved in mediated pain, fever, and inflammation. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs group, abbreviated as NSAIDs, is a well-known drug family that includes aspirin and ibuprofen. NSAIDs inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. And because paracetamol and NSAIDs have similar antipyretic and analgesic effects, It has been suggested that paracetamol exerts its analgesic and antipyretic effects through inhibition of cyclooxygenase enzymes. If paracetamol inhibits COX enzymes, as you said, why it has no anti-inflammatory effects like NSAIDs? Like NSAIDs, paracetamol has analgesic and antipyretic effects, but unlike NSAID, it has no anti-inflammatory effects. But why? This utterly depressing question that had irritated scientists for decades, until finally they have approached the answer. It has been discovered that paracetamol inhibits mainly peroxidase enzyme rather than cyclooxygenase enzyme. Peroxidase enzymes are present in low concentrations in the CNS. Therefore, paracetamol can effectively inhibit it. However, during inflammation in peripheral tissues, the destructed cells produce large amounts of peroxidase enzymes that can't be inhibited by paracetamol. Therefore, paracetamol has no anti-inflammatory effects. That makes sense now. Now we will go to the third suggested pathway of paracetamol action which is cannabinoids pathway. This strange story started from the metabolism of paracetamol in the liver to produce the intermediate metabolites P-aminophenol, which travels to the brain where it is conjugated there with arachidonic acid derived from the cell membranes to produce AM404 molecules. This conjugation reaction is catalyzed by fatty acid amide hydrolase enzyme. This AM404 activates endogenous cannabinoid receptors. mediates the release of endogenous cannabinoids and mediates antipyretic effects through inhibition of central prostaglandin production. All these biological effects of AM404 supported the hypothesis that cannabinoids pathway might mediate the paracetamol effects. Interactions between paracetamol and endogenous cannabinoids could explain the feelings of relaxation and euphoria experienced by many people taking paracetamol, away from its analgesic effect, of course. And now we reach to the last pathway in our delighted lecture, which is the opioids pathway. It has been suggested that the paracetamol effects could be partially mediated by opioid system. Some findings have contributed to this hypothesis. Paracetamol could partially work through activation of mu and kappa opioid receptors.
synergism between opioids and serotonergic pathways might mediate paracetamol effects. AM404, the paracetamol metabolite, activates both opioid and cannabinoid receptors. And that's it! I hope you find it helpful! Best wishes, Dr. Jihad Hamad. This video was narrated by Dr. Haya Al Sheikh Khalil.